So, all right. How can I recognize signs of exercise-induced bronchoconstriction and differentiate it from normal exercise-related symptoms? Bronchoconstriction is what? The constriction of the bronchi, right? So we have a bronchi, okay? You have the bronchioles, bronchi, go up to the trachea, comes out, you know. So you got your, your airways. So what are we talking about? Asthma, okay? We can talk about asthma. We can call, talk about acute uh, bronchoconstriction versus chronic, okay? But needless to say, bronchoconstriction. So you're exercising and you're starting to wheeze, but the wheeze goes away in just a little bit versus your wheeze continues. One's an acute episode that, you know, the body took care of, while the chronic one, the body's having a hard time managing. And then you would use a certain medication like albuterol to dilate the airways so the constriction is dilated. It's not constricted anymore, it's open. Your airways are open, making it, making it easier to breathe. So how do you know if you have um, exercise-induced uh, asthma? Well, it goes without saying. You exercise, it's not necessarily because you get very out of breath, like completely out of breath can be like, I have high anxiety, I have maybe, uh, to, I'm not breathing well, you know, I'm out of shape, you know, completely different from a disease, you know. Being out of shape is not a disease. Sorry, it's not. You know, being out of breath is a normal body response unless you're sitting down doing nothing and you're completely out of breath doing nothing. I uh, recognize the signs of exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. The very first thing you want to do is make it, is actually write in a journal. You know, get a notebook, you know, a, a plain notebook or something, and every single day, just write in the journal, how was your day? Don't just put it, be lazy, and just put, you know, I had a good day. What did you do? I went walking. I walked, you know, X amount of feet. Uh, my work of breathing wasn't so bad. You know, I went upstairs. I saw myself getting, uh, you know, doing this, doing that. And you're just writing a journal. How did you sleep last night? That notebook is the most powerful thing that you could ever have. Because now you have information that you can actually relay to your doctor. Versus trying to convert it to memory, it might be difficult. Because, you know, sometimes you go into an, uh, to a doctor's appointment, you forget to ask. I, there was something I needed to ask you, but I completely forgot. You know, writing down in a journal every single day, you will have the most powerful powerful piece of paper that you could ever possibly imagine because you're you're letting your you know you bring it to your doctor's appointment your doctor's knowing exactly what's going on with you and how you feel what do you do day-to-day -day basis and you know how you take your medications and if they're working for you if you're really you know not brief but if, if you kind of elaborate what you did throughout the day maybe a paragraph you know per day I know it sounds like a lot of writing but it does help your memory and it helps your brain out so you're working on your brain this time when you're doing things like that. You're adding a new habit. And you look back at that and you're like, oh, I've been, yeah, for the last five months, I've been having great breathing days. I'm not having a lot of complications. My symptoms are really stable. Um, what does that tell, what does that do for you? That reassures you. Because it's you doing it. It reassures you, it, you see. You see the action, the, the you know, the, uh, the, everything that's happening, you, you see it in action, you know. So writing in a journal is one step number one, primary, writing in a journal. Just keep a journal, keep a log of what you do, you know. And it doesn't have to be like pages long, just a simple paragraph, two, three, four sentences, you know, of what you did during the day, how your oxygen, how that was, how your work of breathing was, things like that. Um, Besides understanding exercise-induced bronchoconstriction, leave that to a clinician. I say that because a lot of people don't understand the, dif the, the difference between bron bronchoconstriction versus just being a little work, you know, increased work of breathing or something. So writing in a journal of your symptoms of what you're doing when you exercise and what happens to you, you know, being completely subjective here. You know, just be completely, just talk about you in a sense. Um, and you give that information to your doctor, your doctor would say, okay, uh, it looks like you might have some, 
you know, acute bronchoconstriction versus chronic. Uh, you might have asthma. You know, you might this might be happening. Let's do a couple tests and check. Okay. Versus you go in a doctor's office say, yeah, I have some work of breathing. And they're like, oh, okay, well, just take this, take that, you know, do pulmonary rehab. You know, it's not a lot of information that you're giving to your doctor. When you have a journal, a lot of information. A lot of useful, very useful information that you can relay to your doctor.